thank goodness that annoying passenger has been removed from the plane. Put further back near the toilets, no doubt. The longest flight is no novelty. And with new planes like the 787 and the 350, there is fierce competition to go further and win the battle for the business travelers. Now, these are approximate timings. They all depend on the winds, and they will change on a daily basis. And it's all according to OAG, the Air Travel Intelligence Company. My flight was Singapore to New York. It times in at roughly I know, 70, 18 hours, 30, can go up to 19 hours. From November, SQ will also be flying to Los Angeles, and that's roughly 18 hours as well. Now, Qatar Airways takes you from Auckland. This was, this was the longest flight in the world, from Auckland to Doha. I know it doesn't look as far, but that's the way the Makeda map goes, Doha to Auckland. Then you've got United Airlines from San Francisco uh, to uh, Singapore. Qantas, this was a great one, Dallas up to Sy Dallas to Sydney. These are massively long routes, 17 hours and five minutes. You've got Etihad, which from, from Abu Dhabi to LA, 17 hours. And then, of course, Qantas, Perth to London. That was also a great favorite. Just to show how big these thing routes can get. Uh, for example, the Qantas CEO, Alan Joyce, he is eyeing up, which would be even longer than Singapore, New York. It would be Sydney, to London, and he says the way to do that directly is the way forward. The reason we want a direct service is that more people are attracted, business people, uh, people avoiding a stopover, people making a direct service, and our business class on this is the biggest business class as a proportion of the aircraft we've ever put in an aircraft, and it is filling. And we know people, business people will be attracted to it, and that's what makes the economics of something like this work. Jeffrey Thomas is the editor-in-chief of AirlinesRatings.com. He joins me now. Good to see you. Richard, great to see you. Uh, you're you're, you're well-dressed, considering you were on the flight last night. Look, I'm wearing, well, I mean, a version of what I was wearing last night. Well, you, you, you've come straight to work, and I've had the benefit of a shower and a change. So. What did you make of last night's flight? Look, I thought it was terrific, a beautiful, uh, smooth flight. Uh, the captain said to us, the A350 is a very responsive aeroplane, very stable aeroplane. And we had a, a, a great flight. Right. Is Alan Joyce correct when he says that direct flights are the way forward? Because there's a limited number that will be profitable, and they do damage the, the hub and spoke. They do, and this, this goes to the core, hub and spoke versus point-to-point, uh, -point, Boeing versus Airbus, if you like. Uh, and it's interesting that an Airbus aeroplane does now the longest route in the world. But the Perth-London flight, for instance, 94, 92% load factor on that aircraft, 94% in premium cabins. So they're proving conclusively that people really do want to go point to point. But will there also be a quicker speed to drop a route? Because we always know London, New York will be popular. Yep. But the one I see that's good, that looking, ANZ's looking at, is Chicago to Auckland. Mm -hmm. Now, admittedly, that connects with United, you know, but, but these are all very long, thin routes. Yes. There are lots of very long, thin routes. I mean, since the 787 was introduced, there's been 170 new point-to-point -point routes that weren't there before because the aeroplane's perfectly sized. And will they, those routes, will they be the first to go in an economic downturn? Look, I don't think so, because, I mean, the economy, the economics of these airplanes, this one we flew on uh, overnight, 35% less fuel than the plane it replaces. So these, this is the, a brand new generation of, air, of aircraft. Are we in a revolution in terms of air travel? Are we entering, about to enter, a new golden age with better beds at the front and low cost? Let's take Norwegian, yeah. low cost expansion at the other end. Low, low cost at the other end and, yeah, more comfort at the top end. And the, in the middle, premium economy is going to get better and better and better and become probably the, the value proposition for flying. As between Qantas, Singapore, and all the big carriers, is there st what's going to be their fighting ground for them? Is it going to be how many trinkets they can throw at you and me at the front, or is it going to be how many trinkets they can throw at that other woman who was down at the back? I think it's the, I think it's the trinkets they can fly to the retired couple, the mums and dads, um, the tall passengers, premium economy. I think that's going to be the new battleground for aviation. I've got to take, I take my hat off to you if I was wearing one. Good to see you, as always. Thank you. you very much indeed. A great flight last night. Fantastic. A lot of fun. A lot of fun.
still to come, have you ever been ripped off? Oh, sorry. I thought I was meant to read that. But that, that woman was back after it's you. my show a little bit longer. Are you guys following along at home? I am the other woman. And yes, still to come, have you ever been ripped off by a ticket scalper? Ticketmaster is fighting accusations that it colluded with scalpers at your expense.